Okay, hello, hello. Hello and welcome to this event. My name is Claudio and I'm the academic coordinator for the SSP22 on-site program. So we are streaming live from the Superior Technico at Tagus Part in Portugal and we are very happy to note the significant virtual attendance uh, to all of our public events so far. Uh, and the distinguished lecturer this afternoon should not make uh, an exception. Today is Friday, which means that we are still in week six of the SSP22 program. And I'm very happy to report that phase two of the program, which is the departmental activities, has have been successfully finalized today. And I use this opportunity to thank uh, the departmental chairs for their effort and for, for involving the, the participants to all these activities and coordinating. So it was, uh, it was a great, uh, great departmental phase. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, this week is also important because of the online SSP program. They, uh, they just had their TP presentations, uh, which I heard they were really impressive. And uh, they will also organize the closing ceremony. And for the, for the general public who is watching us on YouTube, you are all invited to attend the closing ceremony just after this distinguished lecture. Okay about our main event uh, uh, this afternoon for the on-site program, we have two amazing speakers representing the Atlantic Network of Geodynamic and Space Stations. Raege or Raege, uh, pronunciation in, in uh, Portuguese. So uh, this project is resulting from the cooperation uh, between IGN from Spain and the government of Azores. So we are extremely honored to host Joao uh, Ferreira in person here and Victor Puente as a uh, uh, virtual instructor. Joao is the uh, director of Santa Maria Station and also the deputy director of the, of the RAEJ uh, project, while Victor is the uh, head of the IGN Spain for GNSS and uh, uh, geodetic uh, data. You will learn more about the geodetic VLBI technique and network infrastructure and operations. So without further ado, let's uh, welcome our instructors with a big round of applause and give them the floor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's really nice to be here. Um, and well, without further ado, my name is João Salmi Ferreira. I'm the, the RAEG uh, station of Santa Maria. Director, and I'm here today to, to talk to you about VLBI. Uh, that is a technique that we use we, we use for geodetic purposes, but can be used for other uh, fields of study as radio astronomy or astrometry. Um, what I want for you to to uh, to we'll get back with you home. It's a bit about the reggae project is European this 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 partnership between the Spanish government and the Azores regional government um, what is a fundamental uh, geodetic station and why we are so interested in building these these stations um, and then we we jump to the 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 more technical uh, content of these of this presentation the the vlbi fundamentals and some of the networks that provide and are in charge of developing and deploying the the services for for the vlbi so Raege, the Raege project. I know that it's a terrible name i'm sorry for it but we we like it we are forced to and and Raege also it's the acronym the Spanish-Portuguese acronym for Atlantic Network of Space Geodetic Stations. So it has this uh, geometric figure that you can see on the, on the picture. Four stations, two in Spain, two in the Azores. <coughs> and as I was told you, is a partnership between the, the Azores government and the, Spa uh, and the Spanish government. From these four stations, only two are fully implemented. The one in Santa Maria and in Azores and the Yeves Observatory in, in, Spain, in Spain mainland. Um, and as you start to see, the interest of having these stations sit, sitting on these specific points is because you have four different stations in three different tectonic plates. So in the Azores, a region is where 
the, the, the three main tectonic plates that we have here um, join. So the American plate, the Eurasian plate, and the, the African plate. Um, and that kind of gives uh, the uniqueness of this, of this project, to pursue uh, Atlantic studies in these, uh, in these specific fields of, of study. So the reggae station of San in Santa Maria has that that uh, that look over there. Actually, the the, the person that that took this this photograph, I saw him around him. Yeah, hi Pedro. <laughs> He's the author of that photograph over there. And um, and then the Yebes Observatory. There are mentioned some of the geodetic techniques that we have in place. So one of them, the VLBI, very long baseline interferometry. That I will talk to you in a few moments, but also the global navigation satellite systems, so ground stations, what we call permanent stations that communicate with all the, the, the navigation, um, the, with all the, the, the constellation of navigation satellites um, that uh, have global coverage. Also, the satellite laser ranging in Yebes Observatory, we are building one satellite laser ranging uh, station and also the, the gravimetry part, two superconductive gravimeters installed on each station. For you to have just an idea of what kind of equipment I'm talking about, so radio telescope for the VLBI technique, the two GNSS antennas that we have in Santa Maria, a relative gravimeter, but also equipments like a seismograph or an accelerometer for we to have also access to this kind of data from any seismic event that could happen nearby our station. And finally, and one of the most important pieces that we have, the atomic clock, the hydrogen maser that somehow gives a timestamp uh, for every equipment. And you will see in, in a bit why time is so important uh, in, when we are talking about um, geodesy and geodetic terms. So what is a fundamental space geodetic station? Is a station that has at least three space geodetic techniques. So I already talked about the GNSS, the SLR and the VLBI, but also you have the Doris uh, technique that some stations have present. Then in terms of time domain, you have to have a, a, an atomic clock to give this timestamp for all the equipment, to, for everything to be synchronized somehow. And for the Earth gravity studies, also a gravimeter. In order to try to connect and to increase the precision of all the techniques, we can also build an infrastructure that, that is able to connect the data collected by the different techniques. So I can build a, center, a central pillars infrastructure spread around the station and, for instance, to connect the, the GNSS data along with the VLBI data. So, so this is something, some things that you see in a, in a space geodetic station. I, I'm not going to take much time in the Rayege objectives, but um, if somehow you, 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 you want to know more about us and what is the purpose of this network to exist, please uh, follow our social media and visit our, our website. Um, so I, 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 sp I spoke till now a lot about geodesy and geodetic techniques. Um, one way of describing what, what is this science, this geodesy science, is to, to talk of in the, in the axis of geodesy. So first, the study of the Earth shape and size and this understanding how planet Earth is deforming and how the different places are moving according to, to each other. Then the Earth orientation parameters to monitor, to understand and to model mostly uh, how the axis of rotation of planet Earth, of planet Earth is changing um, and the impact that has in, in every system in the all the, the for instance the, the, the all the satellites that are covering and orbiting Earth uh, if you want to be sure and with, with high precision where 
that the areas that you are covering from these satellites, you need to know first how planet Earth is moving alongside time. And finally, gravity. You can see here the, the geoid uh, form. It's a mathematical form of, of planet Earth. It's a, an isopotential of gravity. It's like the zero meter altimetry uh, defined across the globe. It's like if you spread the, the oceans uh, alongside Earth. So understanding how gravity is, it's, uh, is changing through time, the, what we call the Earth tides, not only the, the, the ocean tides, but also the Earth tides, how gravity is moving and fluctuating through time. It's one of the interests of these kinds of stations. So how can geodesy help? Um, most important in defining stable and consistent geodetic reference frame. If I understand how planet Earth is changing through time, not only by the, 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 the natural dynamics of planet Earth or natural phenomena, but also for things like climate change impacts, um, because what we are measuring actually is how planet Earth is changed. So it could be by, by different uh, reasons. And we do so using different techniques that we can spread alongside different, different levels. And each technique uh, uses different levels of this, uh, of this picture. One of the interests as well, you, you say on the, on the phrase that is written down there, is one of the United Nations resolution that calls all member states to, to work and to contribute for a global geodetic reference frame that might help um, uh, in promote and foster a sustainable uh, development. It, it, that's one of the reasons that there are things like the GIGOS, the Global Geodetic Observing System uh, in place. And I told you now a lot of different names and a lot of different things, but the, what I, the idea that I want you to, to, to retain most is it's important to study Earth first, um, and we do so by using space uh, technology and space techniques. But it's important to know Earth first uh, and then use that as a basis for every space mission or every space uh, thing that we want to do. Um, about the VLDI, and that's one of the techniques that occupies most of our time and most of our resources. Basically, what we do what we do with VLDI, so we use these extragalactic uh, radio sources, quasars, uh, that are that are kinds of supermassive black holes that are really, really far away from Earth, but that, that are really, really bright, and we, we can measure the, the radiation that, that comes to, to Earth. And we use that as a reference. As you should imagine, is, as planet Earth is deforming and changing through time, we have to look up to the sky in order to find references for us to understand uh, how planet Earth is changing. So what we do, so radiation, you have to imagine radiation arriving to planet Earth as a, as a plane wave. And what we measure is the time delay that a specific signal takes to arrive to one radio telescope comparing to the other. And by multiplying this time by the speed of light, we get distance. What we are measuring actually is how the radio telescopes are moving according to, to each other. So the, the, the data from one station, from radio, one radio telescope, has, um, it doesn't have any value. We have to coordinate a, a, a considerable uh, network of stations in order to observe at the same time the same sources in the sky in order to get data to understand um, Earth. So that's the basic about the, the VLBI. So in that flow chart, that's more or less how it happens. First, 
there should be an entity that creates the schedules. So defines which radio sources are visible to a different uh, number of stations and then coordinate uh, the times for observing a different kind of, of source. Then each station has to, to set everything up, to prepare the equipments, to prepare the, 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 the recording modules in order to, to, to record and to collect the, all the data needed. Then all the stations need to send the data for a central entity, what we call the correlator, that actually what it does is shifts the the, the, the signal back and forth in order to determine these time delays between the, the, the stations. And then the data analysis where, um, and that well, Vic, Victor will, will explain you and give you more details about it later um, concerning of what, of what we can get from, from these kind of observations. So the, the, the signal chain typically, this is our radio telescope in Santa Maria for you to have a, uh, an ocean. Uh, currently, we, uh, this is a 13.2 meter uh, 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 dish um, with um, a three band receiver. So we can observe in S, X and K A band. And so, we collect the, the, the data using this cryogenic receiver for you to have a, a notion, the, the, the electronics, uh, the, the, the sensitive electronics are at eight degrees Kelvin inside the, the, the radio telescope. And then it passes by different, different equipments, different modules. So first the signal needs to be amplified. Then it is down converted for a baseband in order to be uh, digitized and sampled uh, and then recorded to the, the disk modules. What we are looking for is this kind of, of picture that we have. We, it's what we call a fringe. That means that the, the radiation that was captured by two different antennas, it correlates. Um, and now imagine that for every, every pairs of radio telescope on this network. Um, then the analysis, as you should imagine, the, the time delay that is uh, measured directly by the correlators, it doesn't correspond directly to the distance between the two radio telescopes. There are numerous sources of error that should be modeled and taken into account. First of all, the instrumental calibration, but also the errors due to the, the, atmo the Earth's atmosphere, like the ionosphere that also interferes with the GNSS signal. As, as you should know, the troposphere, um, this source structure has to do with the different kinds of sources that we observe in the sky. So each, or each source has a structure, it, this, it means that the source is not a point in the sky. So it has a given structure and that structure behaves differently at different frequencies. So we have to take that into account in order to reduce the, um, the, the, the noise that, that is captured by our radio telescope. Then all the mechanical deformations and the axis offset. Just for you to have an idea, how everything is done uh, and processed. Um, the main service that occurs worldwide is the IVS for this kind of, uh, of data in the International VLBI Service for Geodesy and Astrometry. Astrometry because using VLBI, we, if we use the, the ground stations as references, we can determine which are the, the, the celestial coordinates of each source in the sky. So we can do one way or another. That's why the same service covers geodesy and astrometry. And you can uh, see how different number of stations are spread worldwide. Um, as most of the things, most are located on the northern hemisphere, we need a lot of stations down here as well for we to have better results. But this is the service that coordinates and defines the schedules for uh, everything going on. 
And to talk about the future, we have to talk about the, the VIGAS, the VLBI Global Observing System. That, that is the, the networks, the state-of-the-art network. So this is a network that promotes the technology develop, development in order to, 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 to get where, where we want. So this kind of technique, the VLBI, it's the technique that might get us and give us better precisions in terms of positioning, in terms of um, defining the earth shape and size, and also about the rates of change. So this is the ambition to work, to improve the technology, to improve, to improve the methodologies in order to be here under one millimeter and under one, a rate of 0.1 millimeters a year. That's the, the, the ambition, that's the goal, and that's where we are working at. And I, I don't have much time for you, so I'll give the, the word to, to Victor Puente. But anyway, thank you very much for everyone. I'm sorry for the huge amount of information that I gave you, but I'll be here for some questions. Thank you. I can stop share the yeah. okay. Pass the maybe you pass the, the thing there.
we have to consider uh, the type of antenna. We have three types of antenna in which uh, the primary and the secondary axis, those that move the antenna in the horizontal and vertical planes are, are different. Uh, here in this figure, you have some different types. In the, in the right, in the left-hand side, you have uh, the altitude has to the mount. In the uh, middle, you have the equatorial mount, and in the right-hand side, you have the XY mount. In addition, the, the temperature in the antenna uh, affects the, the position of the reference point. We have to model the, the formation caused by in the structure of the antenna. And this, uh, this deformation can go up to four six millimeters. And the last points to be considered in the, in the modeling of the, of the delays are the gravitational deformation of the antennas due to its weight, the, the focal length of the, of the antennas changes when we are changing the elevation of observation. In this figure, in the middle, you can see the uh, variation of the focal length of an, of an antenna in the y-axis with respect to the elevation on the, on the x-axis. And in the photo, you can see uh, colleagues from IGN that were modeling this deformation uh, last month using uh, photogrammetric techniques uh, on board and a drone. We have to apply this technique or use a laser scanner measurement to study the deformation of the focal length. Uh, at different elevations. And finally, we have uh, instrumental biases caused by the cable delays. Once the signal ar arrives, uh, the antenna, until it is recorded in the, in the electronic devices, it crosses through, through cables, and this uh, uh, amounts the, the delay that is measured. So this is the process, and which are the unknowns? Normally, we, are, we have uh, sessions of observation that last 24 hours. And in the sessions, we estimate corrections to the a priori coordinates, both of the ELDI antennas in the Earth and to the a priori coordinates of the radio sources. We also compute corrections to the a priori Earth orientation parameters, troposphere with delays in each antenna, and the clock models in each antenna. As you can see, there's a connection of each of these points on, on with what we've seen up to, up to this point. So how is the processing flow? On the green side, we have the observed with delay that we have to correct by some systematic errors, the ionosphere, the hydrostatic atmosphere, the calibration, and the thermal and gravitational deformation. And then we have the corrected observable, uh, which is O. And then we have to compute the uh, theoretical delay with the a priori radio source position and taking into account the a priori uh, Earth orientation parameters, we can transform the a priori telescope coordinates corrected by all the uh, phenomena that uh, modify the, the coordinates of a point in the Earth continuously, namely the, not the continental drift because it's uh, at a larger scale, but the Earth rotation, all the types of tides, Earth tides, all tides, ocean and loading, atmospheric loading and local deformation are modifying the coordinates uh, during these 24 hours that last the session. So we have to compute the telescope coordinates in each of these moments to compute the, uh, the correct coordinates or the a priori coordinates of the telescope. Then we have to transform <coughs> these positions using the a priori Earth orientation parameter to the solar system barycenter. And once we have everything in a consistent reference frame, applying our relativistic transformation, we have what we call the O minus C differences, the observing minus compute differences. And this is what we minimize in a least square sense to obtain the target parameters that we've seen in the previous slide. So the International VLBA service for Geodesy and Astrometry coordinates all the elements that form part of the VLBA from the observations to the analysis, from the stations to the different analysis centers including also the correlators, to uh, produce the geodetic products that are needed for uh, several applications. In particular, we have the coordinates of the antennas and the sources in each session, the earth orientation parameters, which are the polar motion components, the difference between UT1 and UTC, 
and the mutation offsets, and finally, the troposphere with delays. In order to get this, uh, these products, the IBS coordinates different types of sessions. Normally, the, the most usual, uh, the most frequent observations are, are the R1, R4 sessions that take, take place on Mondays and Thursdays every week that are 24-hour uh, sessions to determine the EOP. Uh, normally, there, there are eight to 10 stations involved. Then we have intensive sessions, in which only two or three stations uh, participate and are intended only to determine the UT1 minus UTC. We also have uh, some sessions focused on the terrestrial and reference and celestial reference frame, in which uh, more antennas uh, are involved. Some sessions focus on research and development to reduce systematic errors to start improvements. And finally, every three years, we have uh, campaigns, continuous campaigns, as you all mentioned before. In the future, it is expected that VLDI operates continuously, but this is not the case for the moment. And uh, every three years, there is a, let's say, a test on which would be the, the best capabilities of VLDI in case the observation will be continuous. So once we have seen the process and the products, we'll see the, the applications. Uh, the first one is the realization of the International Celestial Reference Frame. As I mentioned before, this is the only space geodesy technique that allows to determine the, the position of the radio sources. Uh, we have the latest release, which is ICRF3, that uh, was released uh, two years ago. And in this figure, you can see the distribution of the radio sources in right ascension and declination. The yellow dots are the defining sources, so those that are used to define the, the axis of the ICRF. And you can also note that in the southern hemisphere, the distribution of points is uh, more scattered because of the this. If you note the, the map of uh, the IBS stations that you all showed before, the, the number of antennas in the southern hemisphere is, is quite lower than in the northern hemisphere. Uh, this is on the part of the radio sources. We have the counterpart, which is the terrestrial reference frame, in which we determine the positions of a set of fiduciary points on the Earth, in which we have uh, antennas of, the, of one of the four space geodesy techniques. And BLDI allows to, the, to establish the orientation of the, of the reference frame. Here you can see the, the velocity field of the latest release, which is ITRF 2020 that has been just released uh, uh, this, this summer. In order to determine this, this uh, ITRF, we combine time series of antennas of these four species techniques. In this figure, you can see the time series of the, uh, anten of the Genesis antenna of Santa Maria during the last five years. Uh, you can note we have a point every day. So for the ITRF, it's possible to instead of determining a coordinate session phase, we can use the whole history to estimate just one set of coordinates and one set of velocities and combine this information with the different techniques and obtain the ITRF. For this is important to have the local time, the connection in, in this station in which we have collocated techniques, as this is the case of Santa Maria, to determine the delta x, y, z, the difference in coordinates between two antennas of two techniques, of two different techniques, determined with uh, surveying techniques in order to constrain the, in order to link the space geodesy techniques. And I'm just a few words about the EOP. As I mentioned before, we have uh, five EOPs, two components of the polar motion, the UT1 minus UTC difference, and the mutation offsets, which also has two components. BLDA allows to uh, estimate the, the polar motion, which is the movements of the Earth's rotation axis with respect to the, with the Earth's crust. In this figure, you can see the evolution of the polar motion since 2010 to uh, 2020. And you can note a periodical movement, which is uh, called the Chandler wobble and has a period of around 430 days. And the polar motion is also affected by uh, redistribution of masses, major earthquakes, and 
in general changes in the inertia moment of, of the Earth. Also, as I mentioned before, the VLDA is the only technique that allows to estimate the UT1 minus UTC difference. UT1 is the rotational time, the time computed with respect with the rotation of the air, while UTC is a, a time scale based on atomic standards. Uh, in this figure, you can see the difference, the evolution in time. Every moment in which the difference uh, goes near to one second, we have to add which is called a leap second in order to readjust the, uh, the link between the rotational and the atomic time. And the mutation offsets are in fact mm, uh, the corrections that BLBI uh, allows uh, us to, to estimate, which are cor uh, corrections that uh, account for the mismatch between the observations and the model of the International Astronomical Un Union on the precession annotation. As you can see, uh, this is the X component. We have uh, a vertical movement, which is uh, called the free notation. And this is uh, uh, a line of research in which uh, scientists are working now, trying to model this, this free notation, which is not part for the moment of the current uh, mutation model. And this is the light last slide, but just uh, uh, to see other applications. With, that could be the, the, the monitoring of the troposphere. In the left-hand side, you can see uh, 10 years of technical delays at Onsala in Sweden. And you can compare VLBI with other techniques, for example, GPS or uh, dot points are radio sons, blue points are waiter vapor radiometer. And you can see uh, that the, the trends are quite well captured. Well, but uh, the drawback is that VLBI uh, is not con a continuous technique. So you can see uh, several holes in the time series. And finally, time transfer, which is a, a technique that is currently based basically in GNSS, but PLDI is also capable of uh, transferring time, which is finding the difference between two clocks that are uh, placed in a different um, sites in the world. So for instance, we have a, 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 a measure in two points. Uh, we use this technique or GNSS to find the clock difference and combining the clock difference between uh, several laboratories in the world. This is the current baseline to uh, define the UTC, which is our basis for the timekeeping. And this is all on our side. Thank you for your attention. We will leave here some references and uh, also uh, and a slide about GIGOS, in case you are interested. And we are open to, to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you very much for your attention. Guys, <laughs> if you have any questions, this is the time. Well, uh, I'm waiting for the online people, but I don't think you have any questions so far. Hi, thank you for the uh, interesting lecture. Uh, I, I have a question um, that might not be directly related, but uh, I, uh, we have seen that the North Pole, North Pole is uh, moving, 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 moving. Does that Does also something, something you're looking into? into and um, what, is what is your opinion, opinion on that? that? Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's one, one of the, the parameters, parameters that, that, that we are measuring, measuring the, 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 the fluctuations of, of the poles. Um, um, my, my opinion, opinion on that, that uh, I don't, I don't know. know, I mean, many, many people are working hard on modeling this kind of effect. And I'm not sure if, if Victor wants to add anything because he's more in touch with these kind of things. Victor. Uh, well, well, Victor disappeared. Well, I have not, I have 
much insight on that. But that's one of the the the, the things that worries the the most the scientific community about. And that's why you 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 see that many amount of of news about the 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 poles uh, shifting and how we can somehow model it. Um, that's one of the the, the things that the, the scientific community is working on for sure. Victor, can you repeat? Uh, hi, Victor, can you hear me? I have a few minutes left. So I, I was wondering about the uh, yeah, movement of the North Pole uh, and, and the, the possible uh, like magnetic shift uh, coming up and if you could give some comments on that. Sorry, uh, there is a lot of echo and I need to, to hear you from the YouTube streaming instead of the, <laughs> of the of the Zoom. I, I, I need to uh, mute the Zoom and then you can ask again the question. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Victor, can, can, you, can you understand, understand me? me? Can you hear me, Victor? Uh, not sure if Victor is. I don't know if to, to whom. Yeah? Yeah, in fact, there's a. Currently, uh, you can write it down, yeah. Yeah, I th in fact, there is um, currently uh, here in Spain. It was just in the in the news that the, there is a change in the in the trend of the UT1 minus UTC. For the moment, we have to add uh, positive leaf seconds to correct for the for the mismatch between the rotational and the atomic time because the, the the earth is somehow breaking but it seems there is quite some somehow a, an interaction between polar motion and the Chandler wobble that is causing the uh, the earth to accelerate and the, and the days are tending to be shorter and this is something that is a little bit uh, uh, surprising and yeah the uh, there are a lot of scientists working on this to try to, uh, to understand. And in the past, we've seen that uh, the polar motion is also connected with some kind of geophysical phenomena like uh, Nino or, or points like that. But I think there's a lot to, to research on, on this on this point. But th this is the, the, where geodesy can make a difference to, to monitor climate change and, and this kind of geophysical phenomena. Okay. okay, if there are no more okay. questions, start and online, online, then we can wrap up this, uh, this session. So thank you very much, Joao and Victor, for your presentation. It was more than just an introduction, so it was very interesting to learn about the geometric delay, terrestrial antennas, processing flow, polar motion, just to name a few. Uh, it, so it was uh, interesting both for technical background, but also for non-technical. So thank you very much, and if uh, our participants will have questions, they, we can send them to you by, uh, by email with a kind request to answer. So thank, thank you very you much. Very much. Thank you very much.